All right, ladies and gentlemen, and those who know better, welcome to the August raid stream. This is the unopposed raid. I'm Derpy, and I'm going to be going through all the different targets and running through them. But first, we do have a couple things to jump into for this raid. And those happen to be three gifts that we actually just got in the past few minutes from Kixai. Now, these are for the 10-year anniversary, which I think they're celebrating their anniversary all throughout the entire year, almost like celebrating your non-birthdays, but whatever. These gifts include a one chest for every year you've been playing. It tells me I got nine. Well, it tells me I got ten here, but I only got nine, so there may be a few issues with that. In the center here, you can see that everyone has a free Harbinger fleet plus the flagship. And then the last one, it used to be that you were given out a few extra tokens here if you bought coins within the last month. I haven't. I got this one. I don't know the new criteria used. It might just be something like if you have an X1 fleet or a U3 fleet or whatever else. But there's a ton of tokens here that people did get. And I haven't even opened my chests yet. I'm already up to a whole bunch of things. So as we jump into the raid, let's take a look quickly through my token inventory first. And I'll go through and open what chests I can here. And I'll show you how to open the chest without losing upgrade tokens. Now, I got eight Democles, however you say that word, upgrade tokens, which is fantastic. Also, I'm assuming some VXP build tokens are in here somewhere. And again, there are a few build tokens as well. So quite a few really interesting things that we've got here, which is fantastic. We also did get two regular one-day ship build tokens, which stack on top of your normal ones, which means it's going to be pretty easy to build out your lionfish and get your Demac get your Lee's fleet done in the next few uh, few days. I do want to show you a little bit of a strategy here for opening up the chests. Just make sure you first actually go over to the chests themselves. Again, I only got 9, although the previous screenshot says I got 10. Not sure what that is. Open them one at a time so you don't go overbuild on things. So that way, if you open all 10, you might actually stack over on things. So a Lionfish build token, great. Democles build token, also pretty good. Harbinger upgrade token, two of them. That now means I'm up to three, so I'm not going to overfill, but if they all gave me that, I would have overfilled. Democles VXP tokens, 50k, should be 100k per ship. That's pretty good, too. Two more of these things. The limit might be five, so I might be close to overfilling, and it looks like I am. I don't care too much about the VXP tokens. I'm going to open it up again and hope I don't get that same prize. There's a Lionfish build token. Three more of these, potentially four more of these, actually. Uh, more VXP tokens. Five one-day lionfish build tokens. That's fantastic. That's a huge amount. Well, I'm close to overfilling on lionfish build tokens now, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to save these past three, plus if they actually give me that tenth one, for a little bit later. So just open the chests up one at a time to see what you're actually going to get and what you're not going to. You could also spend some actual things in your shipyard and put those in first. But I have two hours left on lionfish, so I'm not doing that quite yet. All right, lots of free things we got there, so whatever we got. And thank you, Captain Lockheed, for telling me how to pronounce that. Jumping into the raid, there's a few things we're going to go through in the targets themselves, the actual sets. We have a bunch of new things. The 900, 102, and 103 are all new. And I'm definitely going to run through those ones. Looks like the A targets are all old, so I probably won't bother with those. Just three things to go through, so we can spend a few hits on each one of these targets. In terms of the actual prizes, we have some interesting things. We have the, well, Damocles. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Sword of Damocles. Anyway, so we have a, this new Sea Troll, which looks to be really interesting. It's got a lot of ballistic and building damage bonuses here. It seems like a Gladius 2.0 and has a special um, effects that we can get into more of this. But this is the next raid hole. Pick this up. Build three blank holes is what I generally say. Maybe four blank holes, actually, this time around and spend all your physical time on the upgrades. Of course, the Ares War Engines, which we got in Pillage, don't waste on points on those if you already have them. And then the Aquila Cannon is the unlimited one for the hull, which is actually, you know, it's that price. I probably won't get it because I'll get all limited ones. That's the Maximus Cannons. They have Pierce, a new attribute we're seeing. And, um, you know, there we go. That's a, that's a new weapon. Get up to 10 of those if you can. Also, a new... Um, special here this is unlimited you can get just one of these and build one, as many of these as you possibly want this is a high velocity rounds 2.0 from the looks of the stat block 
and then the reload and ballistic critical chance special as well as a bit of projectile speed so a few interesting seed specials to go for it seems like pretty much a gladius 2.0 don't forget the upgrade kits i think i'd get 140 of these total or actually i'll probably get enough for everything to use three just from the raid here depending on how fun it is so those are the main things there are a few other elements actually a new defender hall we have defenders in a pve event which is interesting the iron hide i've done a few look at a little bit of the stat blocks it's a rocket hole I'm guessing it's like all your defenders and that it actually can't move unless you, well, you can't control it. And it has a lot of deflections, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it has thermal. It also has a few special abilities and that gives deflections to the structures around you, your buildings, as well as the ships, which is pretty interesting. I mean, buildings have 3 million penetrative of deflection. That's a really large number. And again, we do have the... Um, targeting weapon that similar to the badger so interesting rocket hole it looks quite strong i mean i want three million more deflection on my portal so we can actually stack that up to twice you can have six million deflection on your portals which is huge and it does have weapon that came out with it the steel jaw rockets which is interesting i'm not sure about this wall of patient stat but whatever um i'll have to run more numbers on this stuff actually look at it later it is certainly an interesting weapon, an interesting pull. That's enough talking, let's go ahead and jump into a few targets and see if we can't sink some things. Let me first check to see if I actually have enough tokens to upgrade my Harbingers all the way to X1, because I'm almost there. I've got three days, nope, not quite. So the fleet I'm running is a Harbinger, Dark Herald Harbinger fleet. X1 flagship, everything here is actually X1 except this last ship with these U3. Although I did spend a lot of time on my lionfish themselves, so that's interesting. Not going to put on a crew, or maybe if I have a steelheads, I will. I'll actually just go roll for one, and we can see if I get lucky and get a uh, bullseye brigade, which is probably impossible, but whatever. <laughs> I know this is not the most exciting thing rolling for a crew. I do just want a slightly, slightly less damage from these targets. And yes, the number of chests you get is based on the number of years you've been playing. But it told me I got 10, and I only got 9, which seems interesting to me, because that pop-up, if it told me I got 9 and I got 9, that'd be fantastic, I'd be fine with that. But it did tell me I got 10, and I only got 9, so something's a little bit off there. And again, I just want a crew here to go hit some targets. That's all I want. All I need here. And as people are joining in here, I just went over the last few prizes and all the free stuff we've been getting here, which is really great. And now I'm about to go hit a few targets here. We do only have three new targets. I'm going to try to auto the auto one at some point. Probably not the first hit, but it should be interesting. All right, we'll start with the 102, which should be the auto target entering on the bottom left. We'll see if that actually takes us on the bottom left or on some other place. We'll go ahead and get the... Uh, entire view of the whole screen while we're at that and pan around the target to give you a bit of a reminder of the things in this target so you can actually see what it looks like okay i am entering on the right side here so wherever you enter on the map you're always going to enter in the same spot that's pretty standard for the auto targets there's a lot of land in here we have lots of reaver hulks a few different riots and all again these marauder ships just to have the auto padding Shouldn't be too complicated, and hopefully these hulks should not have any mortars or anything like that. They don't, which is good. I do also have my flagship Harbinger up to X1, which will help out a lot when we're going through the uh, targets inside the... Well, my flagship Harbinger is up to X1, which will help out a lot when I am going through the 103 and the 900 level target, which do have uh, fire fields, which these cancel out. Also, remember to use your uh, flagship weapon on these things if possible, because it does have a debuff. I believe it's on the reload of, the, of these enemy ships, so you can actually reduce the damage you're taking, even for the slow ships, if you stick them in there. Killed a few of those things. Let's go over to the top left and grab this right, which is hiding off on here. And perfect. Grab that guy, keep moving, spin around a little bit, use your built-in built -in weapons on all eight sides, and grab those. Another one of these, another one of these shots here. Perfect. Now this guy is starting to move before I even get there, which is fine. The riot did not appear to be doing that much damage. Here's the next Hulk. I'm going to go for that one rather than the riot in the corner. It doesn't look like there's anything off the map, which is good. I don't like it when things start off the map even, especially if they can actually go off when you're already in the target. 
Again, using the debuff weapon from the flagship, and this is looking like it's going to be reload repair. I would not be surprised if someone with really fancy driving, not stacking up, can get this down to, say, instant map repair. I'll bet you with my mostly X1 fleet, I've got instant base repair. And by the way, the driving itself is not going to change if you have a U3 fleet, an X1 fleet, a U1 fleet, a U0 fleet. It should be pretty much the same driving. Unfortunately, I'm not going to scrap my entire fleet and rebuild it at U0, so you can see with the U0 fleet. Let's go ahead and check the damaged battle report in the build. Overall, the target seemed um, pretty basic to me. It didn't seem like it was missing something, which of course we'll get to see more of in the actual a 103 and a 900 level target. It felt really easy, which is good because I got 10 minutes damage on that driving. I'll bet you I'll just be autoing this one and just doing 20 of those before I log off and or just going through instant base repair those every single time. Target was easy with an X1 fleet. Without that, you'd probably take double or triple the damage there depending on your exact build and layout. But that's what I'm getting. That's the results that I can share. And, you know, instant base repair still heads not too bad so overall i'm really happy with that one if not worried because it means that the next one will probably be harder than this if that makes any sense so the target here perfectly reasonable the damage is perfectly low that's what i would expect driving steel heads mostly x1 should be about 10 minutes if not a little lower than that let's go ahead and jump on to the 103 target this one should be a little bit rougher <laughs> By a little bit, I mean I'm going to have to do some driving here. I haven't seen this before, obviously, so I don't know the correct entry angle. I'm going to try top left here and see what works out. All right. Entering from the left side, we've got lots of ships here on the convoy coming at me. I'm going to try and take out these hulks here that are going to spit out the mortars at me. Um, well, these ones too. And then the other ones with other mortars should be canceled out by the... Uh, Firefield from extinguisher from the flagship. So I'm gonna try and go for these large ships first before the medium-sized ones. So we'll have to see how that works. Again, trying and using the debuff on here to reduce the damage that they're spitting out at me, if at all possible, because I really want to take lower damage in this target. So again, your flagship does have a reload debuff if you do select the enemy ships. And again, try and continue moving if possible to remove any damage from any of these mortars or anything or the rockets from these guys. It does also appear there are some riots hiding off screen right behind me here to the right of my ships. So be aware of those. I'm not sure what triggers those. It is often these other little guys in the target or maybe time based or killing everything else. Looks like at exactly 14 minutes, we have things incoming from the left. Let's go ahead and take care of those and grab a few of these riots here. It's going to be challenging against these because your flagship weapon does have a reload, which is why you were noticing I was only using it on the things I could actually manage at it. I was trying to point it away from the marauders, and I was just heading towards the uh, things I wanted to debuff when everything was alive here. You'll see that again a little more clearly if I do hit another few of these things. Alright, another marauder here is just off screen. If we kill that guy, let's see what it happens. I am in the 103 right now. I did 102 just previously. Another few rides here, one coming in from the left side. I wish they would spawn in earlier, so I'd actually have a chance to be done with this target, because I feel like there's nothing for me to shoot at right now. So I would love if these last three things could come at me earlier, or I could actually see them off the map, so I could know what they were, how I had to trigger them, whatever else. Uh, knowing Kick's Eye, these could probably be a massive super hole, and they would wreck my entire fleet. But they're not, because the health bar on the top left here is so low. I wish these things had spawned in earlier than 13 minutes in. I mean, this target is done more quickly than 2 minutes, which is fantastic. But it could have been done in about a minute with this fleet, if I really felt like that. Well, there's 103. I had told you I was worried about it, but it looks like it's going to be almost or pretty easily instant map repair. We do have the 900 target coming up, and I will, of course, try and auto a few things as well. Most damage here was explosive, I'm guessing from the explosive Hulk weapons on those uh, those big pancakes, whatever we're calling them these days. You can also see how effectively I used my built-in explosive weapons by this uh, the portion that's explosive versus concussive. If you're spinning around more and using them more, you'll have more explosive compared to concussive in terms of the ratio. And that's 7 minutes damage, so... Um, I'm not going to say the targets are too easy because Kick's Eye might be uh, listening, but 
The targets are not that hard, these first two. I'm not sure, not sure what happened there, but the set is perfectly doable, and it's a really quick target. And it was pretty fun when I was hitting it too. It wasn't anything crazy, anything unexpected, but overall I'd say it was pretty fun. So not too bad there, which, hey, I'm not complaining about it at all. Seems like they're giving us a nice gift of, of some, for some reason here. The raid starts for different people, D. Murphy, you're asking. It starts one hour later for each world you're in. So in Alpha, it starts now. In Beta, it starts an hour from now. In Gamma, one hour after that. Yeah, don't worry, I didn't say it was too easy. I just sort of implied that. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the 900 target. With any luck, this will be a little bit more difficult. And this is a co-op target as well. So it's worth having an Alliance member just sit in the corner so they can get the credit for the bonus. Even if you are not actually in there. Yeah, or if the 103 did give less damage than the 102. But I also may have driven better on that one. Not totally sure. Um... I'm not sure that it's supposed to be harder, it's just supposed to be different. The 102 is probably more consistent, auto versus driving is going to be a little bit higher. The 103 has a higher variability, and which means I hit on the low when I was driving, and I didn't when I was on auto. Alright, the 900 target has lots of moving things here, two moving convoys. They probably try and collect together in the center. I'm guessing you don't want to be in the center of these things when they collide. And they are moving towards me. Let's grab this first right. And then these hulks here while staying moving kiting it a little bit. And turning if at all possible to use my 8 octo weapons. At least half of those say in there. I'm going to try and go for the hulks first. Rather than going for these uh, whatever you call those eradicators. It's because the hulks are the things that actually do damage to me. And you can see that the fire fields are being extinguished by my flagship's aura. Which is really really good because I really... Do not like the fire fields. So I actually did this one to X1 when I usually wouldn't have. Just because the, this ability was so powerful. Let's grab this last eradicator here before it gets away there. And yes, this damage, I mean, it's certainly helping out a lot. It makes the driving a lot easier and reduces the damage from, say, autoing the target. Which I wouldn't recommend autoing this one in the first place. And this is a lot different to last month. I don't know if it's because I have upgraded more or whatever else, but the uh, it really does seem like this rate is very, very reasonable. I would expect a massive uh, pushback if kicks like try to raid damage, which raise damage, which would be insane. Another few targets here, another few ships. I mean, there's a lot of ships here. There's a ton of them, but all these small ones do nothing, and the others only do a little bit if you approach them correctly. So from the side here, trying to take on one, possibly two at a time, so staying away from the other riots at the center here, continuing moving to try and reduce the splash damage taken, and using my, I mean, just using these octo weapons, just spinning around a little bit, and things are dying in pretty much one shot, or one or two volleys, I should say, rather. One or two salvos might be a better term. Alright, another few ships here. We have to go clean up these marauders so they don't actually get away. Because those can be a little bit annoying when you have to go across the entire map just to kill something. Yeah, they are being quite nice for this 10th anniversary thing. Raid's really easy. I mean, this target's going to be harder. I might actually have to spend a coin or two on this one. But the lots of free tokens, which is great. And the two targets on the bottom set are very, very doable. And they're actually pretty interesting and pretty quick to hit. This is the top level target. I'm going to be done with it in about 3 minutes total, which is pretty good. I do still have to hit about 100 things, but hey, whatever, that hasn't changed in a real long time. Looks like the build I have, though, is working real great, and these things are dying quickly. I am taking more damage on this one, so this target does provide, the 900 specifically, does provide a challenge for me if I do want a way to actually use my fleet at the highest capability and run through something a little bit harder than autoing 102. Let's see another few things here. And yeah, this uh, this target, real nice. Another eradicator. Again, these fire fields I can completely ignore with the X1 flagship. The other thing to realize is most people probably don't have an X1 fleet because they were spending their time building their lionfish. I do because I spent about 50 coins on my flagship for the first raid. I spent two spent up two days for the first raid, so it was already U3 there. 
and I did focus on this over equipping armor to my lionfish, which I think now is the right decision. I wasn't sure about that. Alright, so I've ran through the, these three targets one time. We definitely have some more time to hit a few other things and go and test a few things on auto. Overall, thoughts on the 900 target is that it's really, really reasonable. I mean, the damage taking is pretty low. It's hard enough. There are ways I can still find here to reduce the damage. And I could use a few things to better capabilities to get the full 1 million points, which is pretty good there. Looks like repair time for this is sitting at 29 minutes, so that's not quite instant base repair. Which, hey, if that's a good goal to get down to, that's a good goal to get down to. I'll spend a coin on that and go ahead and try and auto the 102, because the 900 looks like we'll have to come back to that one. With this target, the 102 specifically, is supposed to be an auto target. If this cannot be autoed, I'm going to be quite upset. If I can auto this for lower damage than I can drive, I'm going to be quite happy, but that hasn't happened in quite a while. Mike, you're trying to buy the X1 offer already? <laughs> All right, let's see. As this goes through auto, I will mention that I did do my usual things. My fleet build is a bit weird or at least different than they generally are for most people. I only actually equipped four ships for the first raid. I was using four ships for raid one, which means I could save more. I could spend more time actually upgrading those rather than building them. So my raid strategy these past few months has been just to build build the ships with the tokens I've got, build a few blanks, and equip them with the tokens I get later in the TLC and the Forsaken Mission tokens. And it's still saving two and a half weeks for the flagship, by the way. But every physical second of actual shipyard time should be spent upgrading, not spent building. Having four ships at U3, which you can do pretty easily, well maybe not the flagship, flagship's U2, but four ships at U3 is a great way to go into the first raid. Plus, with that one-day participation token from Pillage and the five from the TLC that you hope we all doing if you want to be current, you can have one of those ships up to X1 by the start of the first raid, which is really cool. Plus, I probably went and spent another 20 million points on upgrade tokens for the Harbinger in the first raid itself. I had two at X1 by the time that raid was over. So I do build my fleets differently than other people. It's a little more risky, but when it pays off, it means I have most of the X1 for real cheap, if not free, which, again, has been the strategy that I've gone for. So sometimes it pays off, which apparently this cycle, and actually every cycle other than this it has, sometimes it hurts a little bit more, but overall it's worked out quite well. There's a 1 or 2 on auto. It seems to be a pretty easy, quick target to auto, and is not that bad at all. Let's check the damage on this. I'm guessing instant base repair, probably about 15 minutes of damage. Let's see. 12 minutes, 37 seconds. That's real close to my auto time. And let's move this up here so I can show you my build just a little bit more in detail. It's split each armor. If I went back and changed the armor, I might put three explosive, one concussive. But I had no way of knowing that. So, hey, pretty good. And another 250k points. You could just do this thing 100 times and your raid will be done. But I'm going to hit a variety of targets and see a few more things. So it's great that I can auto this target for instant base repair. Will everyone be able to do it? No. Should people try that um, that auto? I mean, try that auto? Sure, go for it. Uh, U0, you will get much more damage than X1, which I can't... I mean, I can't do anything about that. But if your fleet's at U0, that means you haven't done the... TLC that's ran twice, you haven't gotten any upgrade tokens from anything else, they even had two upgrade tokens in Pillage, so your fleet should be upgraded by now if you're actually trying and, and working for it. We also did get that free fleet, which I should take out for a spin. You can see that I do have um, you know, four of those ships and another Dark Tower Harbinger. I should equip a skin on one of these to differentiate, differentiate them. I do have the Pineapple skin, which I, um, you know, that was the purpose of that event that we got this for in Beach Party was to go get these skins. But then it gets up, ends up being too large and you can't actually see the entire uh, entire ship and the repair stuff. So I've ended up just taking that skin off. Well, let's go ahead and check the 103. Well, do we want to run through that one again? And some map repair on that guy? We want to go through the 900 one more time. Or switch over to the free fleet, which I think is what I'm going to be... Well... Vincent here is saying in chat, which, that I can probably auto the 103, which seems pretty tempting. <laughs> Shouldn't have told me that, because that means I'm going to auto almost my entire raid, so 
let's check that one out. It probably does matter a little bit what angle you enter on for that guy. So we'll try left side again because I think that worked pretty well when I hit it. Let's go straight 9 o'clock and hit this one again here. Because if the 103 can be autoed, I know that would save a lot of people a lot of time. So at that point, it becomes almost more of an idle clicker game, which makes me wonder, let's have more targets that are harder and a higher payout. All right, 103 auto. Well, you're saying it seems like the same entry point. I'm not totally sure about that. I'll have to retreat. Well, after this, I'll go pick another one and enter on the right side, see what happens. But it does appear, especially with the X1 flagship, that auto is decently possible. You can see I'm all the way up on the side here, and we can even zoom in on the game itself. And it's going through the ships, and it's not doing too badly. It is getting hit a little bit by these cheese balls. I don't know if they actually do explosive damage when they land or not. I'm guessing they do, which is interesting. So, it's also interesting that they're not leaving a uh, aura when they hit inside me. So, I just take damage from the riots here and the explosive guns on the hulks, which are still things to worry about that, but my fleet does kill these things pretty quickly. I am wondering if the uh, X1 Dark Herald Harbinger flagship itself is not i'm wondering if it's more effective than it should be if it's making the it's not only removing the cheese ball i mean the fire fields here but it is also removing the damage over time looking effects from getting hit by a few other things but whatever i'm gonna guess this one can, can actually still be instant base repair 25 minutes damage seems pretty reasonable here with the damage i'm seeing on this fleet so far so if we can auto the 102 and the 103 with your X1 fleet, fantastic. If you want to drive it, I'll of course run through a few things. I'll perfect, the, perfect it a little bit and get down a few paths for the 102 and the 103. But my big complaint here on this target is why is nothing incoming? I mean, I'm just sitting here for another 15 seconds or so. If those ships could spawn a little bit earlier, it might be nice for me specifically. Now, for someone being more cautious at U0, maybe that's just a better approach to leave those ships till the end there. But, um, well, I mean, whatever, 15 seconds, who cares about that? Now, if there was some way to trigger this manually, maybe that'd be a bit better for whatever. So, 103 on auto definitely looks possible. So, um, I might just be autoing almost my entire raid. Try If I actually want to drive, I'll spend some time on the 900 and get that down a little bit further. But, hey. Not a bad result here, so looks like, especially with this fleet. Let's go ahead and pull up the U0 fleet after we test the entry angle here. Much more explosive damage taken, not at all surprising, and 17 minutes, 18 minutes damage. So hey, thanks for that comment, and I've just shown you all now that you can auto this one for real, real easy. Let's go pull up my U0 fleet and hit the 102, 103, maybe even the 900, just to check on the damage that's happening there, because um, it should be, I mean, I'm not sure what this U0 fleet's going to do. Um, a lot of people like to complain when Kickside comes out with a free fleet, but, I mean, the build that they gave you, I would bet is not optimal. It's also going to be U0, so I'm not totally sure <laughs> what that point is. So yeah, it looks like the, the build that they're running, if I can actually, you know, show this the build that they're running is on the right here it's the undamaged one it looks real similar it's just using the not as good specials so the version behind pretty much um definitely not as good but whatever i mean it's um it's gonna do the job in the target let's just see how how poorly so people who built the fleet themselves you have better specials people who upgraded it you have better specials so don't get too mad when kickside comes out with something like this um, you know, I mean, it's not, my fleet is still much better than this free one, so I'm not wasting my time or anything else like that. Um, just be aware of that. Now, would I have done anything differently if I knew they were giving out a free fleet? Probably not, but some players might have, so that is a fair point. And again, this also probably has the limited or unlimited weapons, rather, that are worse. So, Everything about this fleet is just 20% worse. When you have four or five things that are 20% worse, your fleet's probably now half as good, so. 
and this is not going to extinguish any fire fields, which will be relevant in the 103 and the 900 tournaments. It is taking noticeably longer to kill some of these things. You can still use the same tips I was giving you about debuffing the ship you're shooting at with the flagship weapon, and using your 8 octa weapons, and also sort of kiting these things by staying moving. All those tips are still perfectly relevant. The driving style is the exact same. And everyone has the same fleet, so if I can get something done, I mean, people will not have the most excuses in the world to not get that done themselves. Because we've all got the same one, especially if this guy can auto the target for half an hour, 40 minutes damage. Well, you're going to be able to... You're going to be able to do that, and you'll be able to get something this raid. And the most important things to get this raid is the new PvE ship. Is the is the is the Damocles. That's what you should be grabbing, and that's just about it. I mean, that's the most important thing. Get that, start building a few different holes, uh, a few different blanks. If you need a few other things, you can you have more points. Great, get the specials, get the weapons, get all the other stuff, and that will be able to get you caught up in PvE. You know, start building those PvE things now. I mean, my lionfish has two hours left in the shipyard, which means that's two hours left that I can't actually spend on the Damocles. Well, damage taken on the 102 with the free fleet is 36 minutes, which seems pretty nice to me. I mean, free fleet, yes, I've got a still heads on, whatever. The free fleet, 36 minutes damage, that's pretty nice. I'll take that any day of the week. For the for the 102 target, I mean, it's not 25 on auto, but still, it's real nice. So with that 36 minutes damage, let's jump into the 103. And yes, it is the same entry angle that he's confirmed. So let's see what kind of results we're getting here. And again, driving these ones, if you want to auto it yourself and see what you get, you can. This would also make a good fleet to auto a few things, probably the 102. If you have extra repair time, this is going to be worth at least, what, five, six targets that you can run it through. Well, there's an interesting question. You have zero lionfish. Should you start building that or the Damocles? I'd probably start to say build your lionfish, if at all possible. That, or you build Damocles this month only and build the lionfish the next month. It's, it's an interesting question because the Everest will still be useful for two or three more months. It'll be possible to the FM with Everest with that, but it won't be ideal. You should also try and figure out why you're in a situation where you don't have any lionfish built. Were you upgrading your harbingers instead of building your lionfish? If so, that was, I mean, I hate to say it, but a pretty big mistake, and I wouldn't do that. If you want to, my my preference is probably just build the Damocles, get the fleet done, get five five ships done, and then upgrade upgrade and build a lionfish the next month. So this month, Damocles, next month, don't upgrade your Damocles, build your Lionfish. That's probably what I would say. It might not be what most people tell you. They'll probably tell you Garrison only Garrison first. I would consider just delaying Garrison one more month, because the Ever should still be useful for that amount. So I'm not sure how much sense that made to you, but uh, in two months, what you, want, what you want to have happen is you want to have... The ability to get the next PvE hole on day one. That will be the assault one. You want to get that on day one of the raid. How can you do that best for yourself? Well, you have to have the Damocles fleet done to be able to do that. And at the same time, you also need to build a Lionfish. So you've got two months to do Lionfish and a Damocles. Which one do you want to do first? I'd probably say the Damocles because the Everest is still useful in the Forsaken mission. And the raid one month from now, only the Damocles will be useful. So a few things for you to consider there, but that's probably what I would do. Okay, this target 103 does not seem too bad with just the free fleet. I mean, it, it kind of sucks. Like, these ships are running away from me, and I can't grab them yet. I mean, they're, they're too fast. I was also, if you were paying attention to my driving while I was speaking there, taking a lot of damage from the fire fields. I wasn't zoomed in too closely. It's hard for me to tell where these ships actually are because it looks like they're hovering. But you actually have to, um, you know, I was taking damage from the fire fields there. I wasn't paying too much attention. The X1 spoiled me a little bit. So that was just about 50 minutes of damage with the 103, which, hey, use your fleet, not the best driving. That's what I would expect. You know, it's kind of rough, 
but that's fine. Like, I can live with that. 50 minutes or so damage, that's acceptable. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the 900 target and see what kind of damages we're getting there with the free fleet. And at the same time, I probably should be autoing something else with my other fleet. Um, because again, that's instant repair for both these targets I've looked at. Which is pretty nice. And again, this is a co-op target, and everyone in your alliance now has free fleets, so they should go hit something too and see what kind of results they're getting. And you can do it at the same time. You can both split the points, and you both get the bonus. So you generated a free bonus, which I think is 250k for that whole set. So if someone in your alliance can only do the 1 on 2 and 103, have them sit in your corner when you're doing the 900s. Also, this target appears to just put you at the same entry level every time again. I went in on the top right, put me on the bottom left. So you are going to be placed at that same point every time. So auto may be a possibility in the 900 target, which I can't believe I'm actually saying that. Now this is going to be a little bit harder, because these ships are not going to die just quite as easily as the others. It's not going to all die in one volley. So that's going to be rough, because, again, my this fleet's going to be doing half the damage compared to mine, roughly, if you work it out. So it uh, it's interesting here. Like, these things are not dying as quickly, and it's pretty noticeable. So we can do all the math we like and look at the numbers, but at the end of the day, it's the performance of the fleet. How much does killing this more quickly actually help you or versus actually hurt you? And it appears that it's making a substantial difference in the target itself. Could, I'm getting overwhelmed now. I'm going to have to come back and drive through for this guy again here because I wasn't expecting that to happen. Luckily, he's pretty slow and I slowed him down too a little bit. But there you go. And this Marauder is going to escape, which I think I'm fine with. I'm just going to go grab these three ships here on the right so I don't have to come back for them. Then I'm for the convoy on the left. Left side ships back to the center over here. And again, these riots are now running past me because I've got much lower projectile speed. So they got away from me here. But luckily, it always comes back. So it's going to take damage. Not at the very rim here, but when it gets closer, it definitely should take damage. Right about, right about there, I would think. If it ran into the wall, which you can force a little bit, or if you have the X1 field on it, it will be much slower and more likely to actually get hit and take damage at a further range there. Okay, this next target or next loop of or convoy of ships in this target, I do wonder if it's ever actually going to turn off or if they go off screen if you miss out on some of the points, which has happened before. I'm guessing that's the case. If you don't kill everything and they run away from you, you'll probably get fewer points. So I'm going to put myself in a little bit more of the um, way of damage here and, and get hit by a few things. And every ship in this target outranges you. There's nothing you can outrange. Don't worry about that. They all have the same range or greater than you. So just try and stay roughly max range because it means that their splash damage dump fire weapons will do less damage to you. And again, there's lots of different fire fields. I'm going to try and spin through those as, as well as I can just to take less damage. I think I've avoided most of those pretty well on this target. Which is, which I have to say is pretty good. Alright, here's the Hulk. I'm trying to stay moving. You can't outrange it. Just stay moving. You'll take a little bit less damage. And staying in max range does help. But against things like the Riots, it also means they take less damage from you. So two different things to consider there. Now, this target's taking a lot longer of a time when I do only have these free, free ships. Not because they're slower because I'm spending more time chasing things and more time killing them rather than moving on to other things earlier. But that is a good question about outranging ships. You can't do it. <laughs> Another few riots. They're both slowed down. Grab some of those. And they got past me. And one of them's still alive. So I'm going to ignore that and grab these things I actually can kill and can reach. And see if they can run into the wall here, because that would help out a lot. They're doing a little bit of drifting, which looks kind of silly. But whatever. Right, these two are stopped. That's perfect. That's perfect. Just stop right there and let me shoot at you. It's better, I would think, to engage them and actually just open water. Because they don't slide away in that case. So I'll grab this guy, leap over to the right here. 
And this target is much harder, much more noticeable damage on this one than the other two. So it's quite rough for the free fleet. I would, if you just have that free one, if you just have U0, stick to the 50 or the 102, 103. Don't, don't hit, get, don't hit this guy. Perfect. Another three ships here, and that's going to be the rest of the target. So, Yvonne, when the raid actually starts in your world, if you don't already have them, you will have Harbingers. You will have a free fleet. You'll have this one of Harbingers. You should get it. Now, I'm not sure if you need to actually make room in your shipyard or not. You might. So, you need five. You might need five ship spaces. You might not. But you should get this fleet. Everyone's getting this fleet if you log in. That's just how it's going to work. So... Yeah, you'll you'll get it. Don't worry. If you don't, uh, send in a, a ticket because my understanding is everyone should have them. And what you just noticed there with the riot is I can't catch it if it's going away from me, even with the debuff here. So if you pull out maneuver like I just did, if you're running up against something, it's driving away from you. You're gonna have to move back away from it. You can't catch up to things that are that are riots that are moving away from you like that guy. All right, damage taken looks, I mean, more explosive, and it's a ton of damage. Went from an hour and a half, one million points still. We went from an hour and a half damage up to, geez, I took three hours damage from that one target. So definitely do not hit this with your free riot fleet. It's pretty rough. Um, yeah, stay away from the 900 with that free fleet. Just do the 102 and 103. Both of them are real nice targets. Even at U0, they're pretty reasonable damage. X1, it almost gets to the point of being too easy to damage. You can see I'm up to 5.5 million points, so I've got enough for a few things here. Hit a few targets. I spent one coin, too, for this 5.5 million. Grab the Damocles. Grab the... If you can only get one possible thing, grab the Aquila Cannon and, the, and start building those. Pick up the Ferox rounds if you can too. If you can get 9 million points, 1, 2, 3, start building them. If you can get another 10, pick up the Dormos Belt Magazine. If you can get another uh, 10, 15 on top of that, grab the Maximus Cannons too. Maybe even instead of the Aquila, if you know you're going to be able to get all 40 of these things. Of course, uh, upgrade kits are really important too. Get enough for how many you eventually need. I plan to get enough for all you three before the first ship comes out. If you're more limited uh, on points, I think I'll have to remember the exact number. I'll say something about it in one of my later videos. But hey, that's going to be my raid preview video for this raid. It is, um, it's going to be pretty nice. You know, the raid looks pretty decent. And thanks, Scott, for the comment there about the dock overfilling for Harbingers. That's, uh, that's good to know and good to be aware of. I might even have to change the name on these things from Runners to Harbingers. Alright, well, there's a few tips on the raid for you. Go ahead and pick up what things you can. Get the ship first. Start building that pretty early. Hopefully you have Forsaken Mission tokens saved for it. If you don't, you're going to be put in a hard push, even with all the free things. They get four of those and a flag built before the first raid. I'm not sure what I'll do. I will only spend, if you're a Kata player and save the tokens... Only spend physical time on the actual upgrades. It's an interesting strategy. It's hard to realize and start doing, but it will work. Hopefully this uh, video was able to show you some tips on the 102, 103, and the 900. Stick to these two if you have a user your fleet. If you got X1, you can in all three of them. These bottom two can be autoed for quite reasonable repair. At this time, I'm going to say thank you to everyone whose name appears on screen now. And of course to everyone who showed up in chat for the YouTube live stream. With that said, this has been Derby signing out, helping you be a better pirate.